Let's see, do we have any stories to tell today? I don't know. I think baby's just eating my brain. <laughs> like those amoebas you get in the lake. Uh-huh. Your baby. baby's now an amoeba. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. We're going to have to snuggle her extra when she actually gets I know. here. She's like, y'all talk shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so cute. You need all you're that tiny finger. Kind of a jerk when yeah. you were inside your mom. But That's you're pretty why. great now. We love you. Look how cute you are. You smell good. You, oh, God, baby. I know. I can't so wait good. for her to get here. Oh, man. Hi, this is the Witch's Magic <gasps> Murder and Mystery Podcast. And I am Kara. And I am Megan. Hello. I have a fun little side piece for you today. Okay. It has kind of a creepy name, but it's not creepy. Oh. Okay. I just, I'm telling you that up front because I don't want you right. to get your expectations for a certain type of story. Uh, okay. Today I'm telling you about the Leather Man. Mm. See? Sounds immediately Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yep. But it's not. No? Okay. No one even gets murdered. Oh. Well, okay. Okay. Sometime around the late 1850s. I love these times. I mean, this story. There's some good stories that come out of the 1800s. Yeah, this is a really interesting little mystery to me. And it's a mystery that we will never solve, which is like, you have to just be at peace with that. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I like the stories that we never, never going to know. Yeah. Okay. So people up in the New England area around Connecticut and Eastern New York started to notice that there was a man who would walk through their towns on a regular basis. I think a lot of the time, if you see just some random man wandering around, you might not even notice that it's the same one right. over and over. Right. But this guy stood out because he was medium mm-hmm. height and build with black hair, a black beard, and blue gray eyes. Okay. He was also dressed head to toe, hat, scarf, pants, shirt, jacket, and shoes in leather. <gasps> yeah. Oh, man. All of his clothing was... He had, boot goofing. He'd sewn the <laughs> tops of leather boots together and made his outfit out of that. What? And he sewed it together with like leather yeah. twine. I don't even I know don't what know. that would be yeah. called. The outfit itself weighed 60 pounds. Oh my gosh. He was getting a workout. That's just over 27 kilograms. Or, hey, Rachel. No, no. This is for Rachel. Almost four and a half stones. <gasps> How freaking British am I right now? What? <laughs> Are we all impressed? Are we impressed? Are we all impressed that I even thought, they don't do weight by kilograms, do they? And I had to look it up. Right. Stones. So, uh, stones. Four and a half stones. And then some people go off a stone's throw, so <laughs> as a crow flies. So as a- <laughs> we'll just have to start, like, every single measurement will be like, yes. here's culturally all the thing that you could think of. Okay. So the outfit itself weighed 60 pounds. My gosh. And he wore it year round <gasps> through all the seasons oh, as he it, walked. That got toasty. He also carried a leather bag and a tin cup. I had a that thought. Cup. I know it's like such a yeah. ride out of a movie, mm-hmm. like your hobo guy. Yeah. But the whole leather outfit thing. I guess it would be easy to clean because you would just be able to scrub it without having to, like, take it all off, put it down in some water, let it dry. You could pretty much just take it off, wipe it down, and put it back on, I guess. Right? I don't know. I'm just thinking of, like, he had to, it had to smell. Well, that's what I was going to say. When I used to show horses, we'd take it off, take a saddle off a sweaty horse. And even with a saddle pad, it smells like a sweaty horse. I wonder if he had multiple that he would tr- switch out or if he made new ones if he years. just did he wear like the long john's underwear under them so th- it, that smell only i don't know that chafe if he did it. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right so the leather man as he came to be called mm-hmm. he walked a 365 mile loop from the hudson river to the connecticut river whoa and it took him 34 days to walk this route wow. and that's basically what he he did continued to do he would just walk it over and over and so you know 34 days so Mm -hmm. about a month Mm -hmm. right he was so regular in this route that it was said that people could accurately predict when he would show up so like once they noticed him and they started paying attention Mm -hmm. they were like oh he comes every 12 days or whatever right Right. i guess it had to be more than that so every 47 days so it was pretty common for vagrants of the time to ask for work or a place to sleep but he never did that Oh, he just wanted to keep walking. Yeah. He always slept outside. Boots on my okay. <laughs> there were like about a hundred different caves. And in some cases, they weren't like official caves. Mm-hmm. They were like crevices or whatever. Right. But they were just like natural shelters yeah. that he would sleep in. They were along his route. Oh, okay. So he never needed to go ask for someone right, right, to right. give him a place to stay because he had his own. 
And you can still find them. There's one at the Ward Pound Ridge Reservation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the particularly cold winters, he'd have a little frostbite on his face. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, he weathered pretty well. Most of the caves that he chose as shelters had a water source nearby, and some had little gardens, too. Because these were his little homes, basically, and he just traveled from place to Mm -hmm. place. And he became something of a local celebrity, like he would stop by local farmhouses looking for food. And since his appearances were so reliable, people were like, oh, he's going to be here today. I'm going to make an extra loaf of bread or I'm going to make an extra pie. I know that's so nice. And he was always very polite and And thankful. thankful. Yeah. Some schools would even let their best student hand him food on leather man day is what they would call it because they knew when he was coming so they'd be like okay when he comes by you can go take a mess and i'm sure the kids were like yes yeah because that's like getting to go make coffees right (laughs) yeah yeah, special so like i said he was very polite but he didn't talk much okay and he mostly communicated through like grunts and gestures Hmm. he could speak but when he did it was pretty minimal broken english but he was fluent in french Oh, so I don't know if he didn't speak a lot because he didn't, he didn't really speak English. And he couldn't, yeah, right. And he carried a French prayer book. Um, he also declined meat on Fridays, which made people think that he Scott might Floyd. be Roman Catholic. Yeah. Connecticut had what they called a tramp law, and it was passed in 1879, which made it legal to like arrest uh, hobos. But ten different Connecticut villages passed local ordinances that specifically exempt. You can't. The leather man oh, from the state law. You can't arrest him. Because nobody was afraid of him. He never right. caused any trouble. There was just no problems yeah, he from wasn't him. breaking in or doing anything bad. Right. He was only arrested one time, and that was because they were worried about his health. Oh. So they arrested him just to, like, have him checked out. Yeah. And a doctor checked him out and declared him to be in fine health, aside from an emotional affliction. And I'm like, same. I Every have day. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. The you leather man. That way. <laughs> and it was like, so he's fine. He had money. He wanted to be free. And they were like, okay, so we, we can't, we can't keep him for any reason. Yeah. There's no reason to. Oh, so they left him alone to continue his 365 mile loop month after month. Oh. So you might be like, he had money. What do you mean he had money? Yeah. And he did, but no one really knew how he got it because okay. like I said, he wasn't asking people for work. Mm-hmm. He just walked. And he couldn't be stopping to do any jobs because he always showed up when he was supposed to. But he did have like a standing order at one of the stores on his loop. I mean, he probably had standing orders at multiple stores, but this one store like Mm -hmm. still has a record of it. He always stopped there and picked up a loaf of bread, a can of sardines, one pound of fancy crackers. Oh my gosh. Only the fancy crackers. Only the fancy crackers for this leather man. A pie, two quarts of coffee, one gill of brandy, which... I, I probably not, kept him healthy. I did not look up, but uh, I mean, I, I assume it's like, you know, the thing a fish breathes through, yeah. just full of uh, gill. Uh, yeah. gill of <laughs> They've got a sack of gills and it's got brandy. <laughs> yeah. And you just have to like suck it out. <laughs> so gross. Like a fish is breathing, but you breathe in the gills. You breathe in the brandy. You touch them to your necks. <laughs> and the brandy. You take these gills and brandy just <laughs> slap them on. And you're just like, and it mm. immediately is in your blood. It's like intravenous. Have, yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's how IVs got started. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Mystery solved. Believe everything we say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is this guy. He's a local historian and genealogist in Connecticut, and his name is Dan DeLuca. Okay. He spent years researching the Leatherman. And he said that when the leather man came through to your town, it was like a big event. The whole thing where it was such on, okay. (laughs) Baby's taking your brain cells too. (laughs) Yeah. Can we blame her? She's so bad. The whole thing where it was on such regular intervals made it feel like a holiday, you know? Yeah. Or like anticipating it. They're excited. They're making extra food. Yeah. And people were fascinated by him. They would sometimes be like, hey, I'll give you this pie if you'll just tell me a little Mm -hmm. bit about yourself. And he would always decline those offers Um, he wouldn't talk about himself so if anyone asked about his background he would abruptly end the conversation oh he wasn't rude or anything like he seemed to even have like a playful side de luca found a story where some school children left four old like tarnished pennies for him out along his route where they knew he passed by so when he came by he picked them up and put them in his pocket and he replaced them with four like (gasps) new oh, shiny pennies what? which i think is the cutest That's little really story cute. so we don't really know how long he walked this route mm-hmm. 
like I said, people started to notice it in the late 1850s. Okay. DeLuca's research shows that the Leatherman first appeared in the area around 1856, from what people could tell. Hmm. And they think he was about 17 years old then. Oh, wow. So we don't know when his 365-mile loop started, but we know when it ended. When he didn't show up for his regular stops, people went looking for him. And his body was found in March of 1889 in one of his caves. This one was the Sawmill Woods Cave in Mount Pleasant, New York. Okay. He chewed tobacco, and when they did an autopsy, it was determined that he had died of blood poisoning brought on by mouth cancer. Oh. He was about 50 years old. So, I mean, even just from the years we're sure of, 1856 right. to 1889, that's 33 years of the leather man walking and walking, walking. and walking. Wow. Yeah. His body was taken to an undertaker, and his leather suit was put on display in one of the local shops. Oh. He was laid to rest in Sparta. I don't know if it's Sparta. Mm. Sparta. That sounds Sparta. more natural. Cemetery in Ossining, mm-hmm. New York. For 64 years after his death, his grave marker was just a plumbing pipe that had been stuck in the ground. Oh. Then in 1953, a headstone was placed on this spot, which read, Final resting place of Jules Bourglet of Lyons, France, the Leatherman, who regularly walked a 365-mile route through Westchester and Connecticut from the Connecticut River to the Hudson River, living in caves in the years 1858 to 1889. Oh, wow. And it's like Jules Bourglet. Yeah. Okay, so that name comes from a newspaper article that had been published in 1884 when the Leatherman was still alive. Okay. It said that the leather man was actually a poor Frenchman named Jules Bourglet who had fallen in love with a girl above his station. Her family owned a leather tanning business, (gasps) and her father refused to let her marry Jules until Jules proved himself to be a hard worker by working in the family business. So, you know, he went to work. He worked really hard. Mm -hmm. But one day he made this disastrous mistake which ruined the tannery and bankrupt the girl's family. (gasps) Oh, gosh. Heartbroken and shamed, Jules Bourglet left the country and wandered the New England countryside in his leather suit so he would always remember his failures. Oh, no. It's a heck of a story. Yeah. It's completely made up. What? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Toying with your emotions. It was presented initially as fact like uh-huh. one of the newspapers was just like we've got the scoop on the yeah Leatherman. we talked to him but it was actually retracted pretty soon after it had been published um the newspaper admitted it was entirely fictional basically they knew they could write whatever they wanted oh, about him because he, he wasn't, wasn't going to talk yeah. about it so there was no one that was going to prove them wrong. right there's are still people who think that's the name of the leather man and it's, it's not it's not That name stayed on his headstone until 2011 when DeLuca fought to have his body exhumed and reburied in a grave that had a little more central placement in the cemetery. Apparently, the first grave was, like, right by the road, Um, and he was just like, I don't know, it's just a little too... Yeah, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. So, the plan at the time was to exhume the body and examine the remains and do some tests to see Mm -hmm. if they could find out any more information on who this guy was. Yeah. You know, sometimes they could do those tests that are like, he has this, this, and this, so he right. must be from this part mm-hmm. of the world or whatever. Mm-hmm. In May of 2011, archaeologists, soil scientists, and amateur historians filled a tent erected over his gravesite and began to dig. Connecticut State archaeologist Nick Bellantoni lay on the gravesite, carefully scraping at it with a small tool. Oh. He found some nails and a few animal bones. What? The body wasn't there. Oh, no. There was no trace of the Leatherman. Oh. So, Bell and Tony was like, you know, because of the amount of time that's passed. Right. The effect of traffic over the shallow original gravesite and possible removal of graveside material mm. by a road grading project where it was yeah. right by the road. That may be... Uh, accounts for the complete destruction of hard and soft mm-hmm. tissue in the grave. So they think that he was, it's not that anybody stole or it's not, you right. know. It just kind of disintegrated over time because of all the wear and Yeah, the it space. was buried, not completely yeah. as deep as it probably should have been. And then, yeah, I guess people doing work and everything right. on the road, who knows? Mm-hmm. So they took what they found, which was basically dirt and the remains of the coffin, put it all in a new coffin and reburied that in a new spot in the cemetery on May 25th, 2011. I think that's nice because it's like, if there is anything left of him in the dirt. Right. 
they at least got that and remarried yeah. it. Um, and they did place a new tombstone over his grave that simply reads The Leather Man. Oh. Which I would just love to see. Right. I feel like I love him for the same reason I love Gray Sherwood and Mother Shifton and all of them. Because it's like, they just, he just, this is just what he did. Yeah. He wasn't a horrible person. No. He just had an interesting life. life. Yeah. They went back in July of 2011 and dug some more at the original grave site, but they still didn't find anything. They found a golf ball. That probably wasn't his. Yeah, I don't think he was golfing. So we still have no idea who he was, where he came from. Or why he walked that loop for 30 years. The same loop yeah, for what, 30 years. what is he doing? According to DeLuca's research, there's strong evidence that the leather man was French-Canadian, probably born in Canada sometime around 1839. Okay. We know he spoke French. We think he was Roman Catholic. And it seems that he had a lot of knowledge of Native American lore that he Ooh. used to survive his life outdoors. Oh, cool. The thing about that last part is very cool. I'm just not sure... Are they just how do you saying get to that point? And how do you know this? Right. Are they just saying that? Well, he survived this long outdoors, so right. he must have knowledge of it. Or is there some other evidence of that? Right. And if there is other evidence of that, I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. I do know that Deluca wrote a book about the leather man. So maybe if we looked that up, you know, that there'd be more. Do you ever watch Dogs or Quinn Medicine Woman? No, but I remember it. I mean, the guy was his name Sully that loved her, but he was like raised by the Native Americans or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. And so he was kind of like their spokesperson or whatever. But yeah. That reminds me of him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, completely. So the last part I wrote was just like maybe there isn't a why as far as why yeah. did he why did he walk that loop? For, I mean, he just did. Why do any of us do what right. we do? And if he was homeless, maybe he was just like I need something to do. And he's just like, this is working fine for mm-hmm. me. I like sleeping outside. I yeah. like not having a lot of possessions or a lot of things I have to take care of. Yeah. And I've got this little bit of money. I'm going to keep going. And and doing the same route over and over kind of gave him that social. It mm-hmm. met his social needs Yeah. in a very easy way that didn't require much of yes. him. Right? Like, yeah. And I think especially where he gets to a point where he shows up and people are like, Oh, hey, you're here. Him. Which that yeah. has to be a nice feeling. And they're too. providing him with food. And mm-hmm. maybe he started it initially to kind of be a loner mm-hmm. that kept doing it because if he really wanted no connections with anyone, yeah, he probably wouldn't have kept up the route. Yeah. Right. Of course, it's all speculation. But I mean, I just think as he kept doing it, it probably motivated him to keep doing it yes. because it was such a nice experience. People were looking experience for seeing him and people cared about mm-hmm. it. Which had to be nice. Yeah. It does make you wonder, though, what was his history? I know. Like, why? Where did you come from? What are you doing? Did he have family? Did he have any brothers or sisters or parents or children or anything somewhere? Yeah. Because there's not enough evidence to go off of. Right. We'll never know. Because his body is gone. Yeah. Completely gone. Does not even have the. Right. It's really fascinating. So crazy. So. That's the little leather man. I know. It's a different kind of mystery than we usually Yeah, that's really cool. I like it. I do too. Sweet little guy. I know. So yeah, there you go. That's the leather man. Um, If you live in that area and you've been to to see his grave with, I don't know, I just think it'd be cool just to be like, I just really love the idea of these people who are just living their life however they want to. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you can still see some of the caves that he slept mm-hmm. in. I think some of them are even available to be seen by the public without, I mean, it's not like a big deal. You just kind yeah. of know it's there. So, you know, if you're in the area, that's... Go adventure. Don't go trespassing on anybody else's land. Right, exactly. But if it's something that's like okay for you to go do, yeah. I'd love to see pictures. I'd love to hear about it. Let us know all about it. Yeah. All right. We'll be back Friday. Yeah. Love you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.